Well, hello and welcome to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Uh, we're actually here in a really remote part of the park um, in terms of the main visited area. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me today as we explore this unique area of this part of the park. This is called the Ka'u Desert. It's an area um, southwest of Kilauea near the Southwest Rift Zone. Um, and it's an area that's less visited, even though the highway runs close to it. And when we think about eruptions in Hawaii, we mainly think of eruptions of lava, like we see here with these beautiful pohoihoi ropey surfaces. Um, we don't think about explosive activity, but this area actually has evidence for a large explosive eruption that occurred in the year 1790. And so blanketing these pohoihoi flows from Kilauea are these lighter deposits of ash. And so we're going to take a look at this material and then show you a really unique part of its story, which involves uh, humans in this area. So if we look at this material up close, uh, you might be able to see these little round balls in places. So this ash is not covering the whole landscape. It's sort of preferentially sitting in these low areas here, um, this paler material. And you might be able to see these little rounded balls or clumps in the ash. And what these are, are these are called accretionary lapilli. So this tells us that the ash particles clumped together somehow. And so the story here is that during this big eruptive event in 1790, the ash went uh, up into the atmosphere. And like you see with a lot of footage of big eruptive events, you would have had a big billowing cloud of ash, uh, maybe lightning in the ash cloud itself. And the electrostatic charge of the particles in the ash cloud, along with the moisture, would clump the material together to form these accretionary uh, lapilli. And so as we look around in here, you can just see these little little round spherical uh, balls in the ash material itself. Now this eruption took place um, again in 1790 at a time when there was two rivaling kings fighting over the big island of Hawaii, King Kamehameha and King Keoa. And King Keoa's army was actually marching through here in 1790 when this eruption took place. Um, and part of his army actually perished. There was actually three distinct um, parts of that eruption. There was an initial eruption uh, of, uh, of wet ash that flew downwind of the eruptive site. Uh, then there was a second event that pushed a big, huge ash column up into the sky. Um, more ash and particles falling around the summit. And then they think the third event was the lethal one that, that took out much of King Keoa's army. Um, and that was like a, a pyroclastic flow and hot ash moving along the ground with, with powerful uh, wind speeds as well. Now we don't know exactly what caused that big eruptive event. There's one idea that suggests that there was a big interaction between magma and groundwater, or perhaps rubble had fallen into the Kilauea pit and, and sort of sealed off its ability to release gases. Um, but ultimately we know that because of this eruption that there's definitely evidence for a future possible explosive event, that Kilauea has the potential to be um, to, to produce these big explosive events. So when King Keoa's army was decimated by this eruption, the uh, other residents of the island took that as a sign that King Kamehameha should be the rightful king. And so he went on to rule and unify uh, the islands. But one of the more remarkable features we see in it, in the ash layer here, are these footprints. So you can hopefully see the outline here of a right foot, the heel uh, going towards the toes, the arch over here. There's another footprint over here coming the opposite way. And so this is evidence that at least during after this first event where this kind of wet ash with the accretionary lapilli fell from the sky, that there were people walking through here. And the original interpretation was that this was the footprints of the armies that have come by here. But apparently research here has shown that um, 
there were women and children as well. And as you look at some of the, the foot sizes here, that, that kind of makes sense. These, these are not exceptionally large. This is maybe like a, a women's size five or six. Here you can actually see some of the indentations of the toes. Uh, here's the indentation for the big toe here. Again, the arch uh, and then the heel coming around here. And this is depressed down into the, the ash layer, maybe an inch or a little bit more than that. So pretty remarkable, this story of this eruptive event here, the ash that it produced, um, and some of the destruction that it caused. Uh, we'll walk up a little bit further and show you, I think there was another footprint we found in here. If you do visit here, be very respectful of not, I try not to even step on the ash layer. You can stay on this dark, uh, sandy, windblown layer pretty easily. And generally you can find it in and amongst these uh, low areas around the Pohoihoi lavas, the big kind of ridges and blisters of this Pohoihoi lava. And I think one of the students found another footprint somewhere over here. Yeah, so there's another footprint um, right here. You can see the the arch and the shape of the foot there. Um, so pretty remarkable. Um, and then again, more of the little balls, the clumped balls in the ash, the accretionary lapilli. Um, so I'm gonna catch up to the students and start walking back. When we get off of the Pohoihoi lavas and onto the there's a, a lava flow that we crossed. I'll do a short little section there because there's another uh, pretty spectacular geologic feature that shows up in that layer. Okay, heading back to the car. It's actually uh, sprinkling just a little bit, but nice transition here from the Pahoehoe lava from Kilauea. And I apologize, I don't know the date on this. So I'll have to look that up and maybe put it in the video description. And then as we head, um, on the trail here, you can see the, the big mound in front of me that the lava changes characteristic markedly from the smooth open surfaces out here. And you could tell why the, the people would have been walking through this area where the, the footing is much easier. And then the trail goes steeply up onto this a -a lava flow. So you can see this is much more rugged and rubbly overall. Um, and this is an a, -a flow from Mauna Loa, it's about 570 years old, um, out of the northeast rift zone of Mauna Loa, which is quite a ways away. So this lava flow traveled off the northeast side of Mauna Loa and then followed the contact between Mauna Loa and Kilauea, kind of curving around the east side of Mauna Loa, flowing into this area. But one of the things I want to point out here, we'll see if we can find one, is in and amongst the rubble and jagged rocks of this a, a flow, we might be able to see a few large rounded rocks as well. And those have a special story. There's one in particular right by the trail, but that might be a little further up. You can see a few of them here though. There's uh, one right here, one right there. And here's a nice one here, right off the trail. Um, so, big, smooth, rounded boulder that sticks out markedly compared to the angular, jagged, rubbly material we see here. These are called accretionary lava balls, which may be one of the most fun terms in all of geology. Basically, these are chunks of rock that were transported down the lava channel of the a, a flow, and they end up just getting coated um, by layers of lava. So it's kind of like a snowball. It just sort of grows concentric uh, circles and rings on the surface of that, that particle of lava, eventually growing to be quite big. There's another one just sticking out over uh, the, the rubble right there. So they, are somewhat conspicuous because they've got a much different shape, different profile, 
than the typical ah ah flows. Um, and if we can find one that's been broken open, we might be able to see some of the concentric layering that is typical for these accretionary lava balls. So we'll keep the video going a few seconds more, see if we can find another one here along the trail. Kind of ironic that we're in what's considered uh, the desert part of the island and it's raining right now. There's a nice one here kind of tucked between, or tucked behind the bush. You can see the overall rounded nature of that one there. Another one over here perched up on a little bit of a channel. Looks like there's a little channel here. Um, so it's up on the levee, that small lava channel. And that might be a big one back over there. Yeah, look at that guy. Beautiful. So there's a beautiful big accretionary lava ball, maybe two meters, six feet in diameter. So beautiful. Just getting rolled down the lava channel, accumulating lava, one coating at a, at a time uh, as it moves. So um, I think that'll wrap us up here. Get back on the trail here. But thanks for joining me on this little adventure in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Um, if you're feeling compelled to, there's a donate button on the banner of the, the YouTube channel. Under the video description, there's some links to donate as well. There's also a thanks button at the bottom right of the viewer screen. And so I appreciate uh, all the like, share, subscribes. That just helps me uh, get the word out to more people that might be interested in geology and sharing the earth's secrets with everyone. So from the Ka'u Desert Footprints Trail in Hawaii Volcano National Park, I'll go ahead and sign off. Thanks for joining me.